I'm so mad and upset. We all look like domestic terrorists now. Trump's most loyal advisor, Hope Hicks, was the one who wrote that text message. And she wrote it on January 6th as the Capitol rioters broke into the Capitol building and proceeded to riot while threatening to hang Mike Pence, the vice president at the time. Now, the January 6th House Select Committee has released text messages featuring Hope Hicks and her exchange with Trump's chief of staff at the time, a woman by the name of Julie Radford. And during the exchange, Hicks wrote this. In one day, he ended every future opportunity that doesn't include speaking engagements at the local Proud Boys chapter. And all of us that didn't have jobs lined up will be perpetually unemployed. I'm so mad and upset. We all look like domestic terrorists now. I like that that was the moment she realized that the the Trump camp had issues. <laughs> had issues, especially with the way that others perceive them. Radford also responded to that saying, yup, seemingly agreeing with her. Hope Hicks also said, quote, this made us all unemployable, like untouchable. God, I'm so effing mad. Radford responded by saying, "Oh yes, I've been crying for an hour. I know like there isn't a chance of finding a job, Radford said, and indicated she already lost a job opportunity from Visa, which sent her a blow off email. And what's really interesting is while these two are engaging in this exchange about their futures, about how this is gonna impact them personally, they seem pretty judgmental toward other Trump administration officials who dipped out before the riots took place. Hicks says, Alyssa, meaning Alyssa Farah, who was um, you know, part of the communications team, looks like a genius, an apparent reference to her resigning from her post as the White House aide one month before the attack on the US Capitol. And uh, they did not like that Carly Kloss, who is Jared Kushner's brother's wife, had tweeted that the riots were undemocratic. They claimed uh, that it was unreal, self-serving, but again, the only thing these two were really concerned about was their future careers, not the impact on democracy with a group of Trump supporters attempting to overturn the election. Farron, it's just, it's incredible stuff. I, I think the funniest part to me is that these folks actually thought they were gonna get good jobs after working for the Trump administration to begin with. The entire four years that Trump was in office, and I know because I covered just about every one of these stories as they came out, would talk about one, how miserable the Trump staffers were, but two, they couldn't go anywhere else because nobody would hire them. This was not your run of the mill presidential administration. It's not like these people were getting good on the job experience. They were learning from somebody who didn't know what he was doing. This isn't how politics work, so you can't take those skills and go to a new job with them. So the job prospects for these two individuals were already slim to none. But as you pointed out too, like we're witnessing history take place because your guys people are attacking the capital of the United States. There's more important things happening <laughs> right. than whether or not you're gonna go work at Visa next week. <laughs> you know, We're changing the course of this country for the worse. And no, it's all about, well, what about me? You don't even think about how this is gonna affect my future and my job. Listen, you had your chance to walk away at any point in those four years. Mm -hmm. You could have walked away when we saw the photos of the kids in cages. You could have walked away when his trade war sent farmers into bankruptcy at rates we have not seen since the Great Depression. You could have walked away when he was making racist comments. You could have walked away when he was attacking people for their appearance on Twitter. You stood by him for all of it. You deserve everything that comes from that. Oh, I agree with that a thousand percent. In fact, what's interesting is even when it came to individuals who resigned at the tail end of Trump's term, they're like bitter about it, even though they could have done the same thing. The two women also discussed the resignation of Stephanie Grisham, who served as chief of staff to former First Lady Melania Trump. She was also very briefly the White House press secretary. It did not give a single press conference, which was hilarious. Radford texted that Grisham's decision seemed, quote, self-serving. Okay, I mean, sure, you could have that perspective. It's, look, all of them are self-serving. 
right? I would have never joined the Trump administration to begin with. But they were the ones who didn't dip out, didn't even issue a public statement on the day that the riots were happening. I mean, they're having this text exchange privately, but they won't publicly denounce Trump. They were all terrified of him. They all bowed down to him. And they calculated that Trump would create a wonderful, you know, career path for them because they served in the White House. And look, to be fair, some of them did go on to have lucrative careers as CNN contributors. But in this case, I really don't know what Hope Hicks is gonna be up to. I think she's gonna be fine, but it's not about Hope Hicks. It's not about Radford. It's about what Trump attempted to do and the damage it caused you know, to our electoral process, people's faith in our electoral process. None of that matters to them at all. It's just, I don't even know if it's like second in line in terms of their priorities. No, it, it, that's not even something that crossed their minds that, that day, I guarantee it. And more to just this selfish mentality they have, did they not look around and see what happened to everybody else? I mean, Sean Spicer, who eventually did land a job over at, was he Newsmax or one of America? I think he's Newsmax. But it took years for Sean Spicer to be employable. He was begging the networks to give him a job and they all said, no. It, everybody that has thrown their lot in with Trump, well, I shouldn't say everybody, I should say nobody gets a happy ending, right? There is not this big fairy tale, Oh, everything worked out for me in the end. Ask Michael Cohen, ask Rudy Giuliani, ask John Eastman or Sidney Powell. You know, all of these people that threw their lot in with Trump, their lives have become pretty bad. You know, Michael Cohen, obviously, he did his time, things are better for him now, but he'll be the first to tell you. This is what happens when you stick by this guy through thick and thin, you pay the price, not him.